Chances are, if you're into avant-garde fashion or luxury footwear, you're at least somewhat familiar with Guidi by now. Today, they're known for their handcrafted artisanal footwear that's synonymous with premium construction and a worn-in look, but how exactly did Guidi become what it is today? Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. Today's video is just going to be a quick dive into Guidi's history and ethos. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started, I do want to say that I am no expert on the Guidi brand. I'm just so fascinated by the way they do things and I thought I would share that fascination with you guys today. So without any further ado, let's get started. The Concedia Guidi Rossellini, Italian for Guidi Rossellini Tannery, was founded in 1896 by Gino Ulivo, Guido Guidi, and Giovanni Rossellini in Pescia, Italy. Leather tanning in this region had existed since the 14th century, so it was no stranger to this type of profession, and it's also home to some of the best artisans in the fashion industry. Giovanni Rossellini unfortunately died in 1923, and his share of the company was taken over by the other two and it was therefore called Guidi and Rossellini's successors. So if you see some vintage Guidi products that say Guidi and Rossellini's successors, that's why. The brand's been passed down through the family's heritage for over 100 years, and today is ran by Ruggiero Guidi, who really makes it a point to maintain that traditional spirit of Tuscan leather making. They're known for their amazing craftsmanship and use of the finest materials, and they've kind of set a standard for the rest of the fashion industry. For the first about 100 years, Guidi was just a leather supplier, so they would supply their leathers to a lot of fashion houses, and they're still kind of considered the go-to leather supplier for both high fashion and avant-garde. But Ruggiero Guidi has kind of always been known for his collection of footwear, whether it's work shoes or hiking shoes, he's kind of always been a big collector of leather footwear. And in 2003, he decided he wanted to try to recreate those shoes in a sort of modern avant-garde way, and he started working on a footwear line for Guidi. Keep in mind, Guidi had never made their own shoes before, so Ruggiero could have definitely used some help, and he reached out to Alessia Righi Amante, who had worked for the now defunct label Carpe Diem. Righi Amante still oversees the marketing, sales, and creative direction sides of the brand, and she's overseen some really cool video projects that were made for campaigns for their collections. When Ruggiero showed her the first prototypes of the shoes, she just thought something was off about them. She thought they looked too new, like they were meant to be worn to church, and she thought a worn-in look was needed to complete them, and that's exactly what they did. So from Righi Amante's advice, one of Guidi's main trademarks today was born, object dyeing. This was so important to the formation of Guidi as we know it today, because the Carpe Diem label was run on that very principle. They used a lot of unconventional dyeing and washing and different production methods to give the garments a worn-in look, and that really became the brand's identity. What really sets Guidi apart is their production methods. Although the brand's over 120 years old, their production really has not changed a whole lot since then. They've always been against the idea of mass production and they only hire the most skilled craftsmen and they keep everything local within a 10 mile radius as well. They still use techniques that other major players in fashion might call outdated, but this gives the products a really personal and authentic feel that's really missing from a lot of mass produced fashion. When we have something in hand from Guidi, you can definitely just tell that time was taken to perfect it and you have a really close relationship with the product. Guidi uses very secretive and local methods to mold and create their shoes, and they really stick to the way of doing things that they've used for over 120 years. They tend to use vachetta skins, which is essentially leaving the leather in its natural state with imperfections rather than a perfectly smooth finish. First, the leather goes through a natural vegetable tanning process, where tannins from oak bark and chestnut bark are mixed together in a huge drum. This gives the leather a nice dark hue that darkens as it ages. This allows for almost infinite variations in the consistency and the texture of the leather, and it even makes it naturally antibacterial. Like I said, everything in the production process is kept pretty local, so after they're done at the tannery, the leathers are taken to an assembly factory, which is just a 10 minute drive away. At the assembly, everything is done by hand, where artisans cut the leather out of paper patterns and then attach a sole and different hardware to them as well. And this is where that object dyed technique that I mentioned earlier comes into play. Those finished shoes are then brought back to the tannery and thrown again into one of those big drums, but this time the drums have dye in them. Usually when shoes are made, the leather is dyed before they're assembled, sort of as all separate components, but here they're dyed as one finished unit. One thing this does is it gives the upper and the sole completely matching colors, and that creates a really worn in look that's subtle, and you might not really notice it at first, but if you look at most other shoes, they sort of have a little bit of a color difference between the upper and the sole but with Guidi, they're matching completely. 
Throwing them back in the drum like this gives them a lot of personality and an extremely soft and supple feel. But one issue that comes from that is that their sizing is completely out of whack. A lot of times the Guidi boots run so small that people have to size up by two sizes. And that's because the leather shrinks and contracts a lot inside of the drum. Guidis are also all made with Goodyear welts, which means they're extremely easy to repair and made to last a long, long time. They have a wide range of different silhouettes and models, but some of the most popular are their back zip and front zips. There's also derbies and other lace-up options like hiking boots that you may be familiar with. Brands continue to go to Guidi to supply amazing materials and for their ability to adapt to their clients' needs. And their brand philosophy is really relevant right now as more brands push towards sustainability in slower fashion. This has kind of just always been part of their brand DNA and they've really made a point not to change with the times. <laughs> close out the video, I just want to share my personal experience with my first pair of Guidis that I just recently bought. This particular pair is the 796V in a full grain horse leather. The thing I really love about these is that they came pre-made with a heavy duty Vibram lug sole rather than the stack sole that they usually come with. I got these second hand in brand new condition. I believe this lug sole version is no longer produced, but I'm sure you can kind of customize them at any cobbler to get that lug sole on them and get this look if you wanted that. The reason I'm glad I got these brand new is because the leather definitely molds and creases to your feet in a very specific way, and I kind of just wanted a clean slate to break these in. After wearing them about 15 times, I'd say they definitely feel like they're breaking in a lot more and they're starting to fit me like a glove. As far as sizing goes on these, I was surprisingly able to go true to size on a 44 and they fit perfectly. I would definitely just recommend doing some further research or even trying them on in store before getting a pair. Just because I've heard some crazy things, like I said, about people going up two or even three sizes. Compared to the 986s and the 988s, these definitely have a more rounded toe cap shape, which allows for a little bit more room, as well as a shorter height. Um, these come up to about my mid ankle rather than the calf area. One cool thing that they've done recently is put a Serta logo QR code on the bottom of each pair that allows you to authenticate them. I just think it's cool that while their production methods are still pretty primitive, they also use some modern things as well. I was hunting for some Guidis for the longest time and I finally decided to pull the trigger as a sort of graduation birthday gift to myself. I'm so glad I did and it feels so good to have something that took so much meticulous care and detail. There's already a few scuffs here and there on these and I plan on adding a full collection of scuffs to them. I know that after a quick cleaning condition they'll be looking brand new again and I can't wait to put a lot more wear into them. What started as a family leather tannery in the late 1800s remains one of the most important and well-known luxury footwear brands today, and for good reason. While so many brands feel pressure from consumers to take a slower approach to fashion, this has been Guidi's way of life all along. Their refusal to bend to modern trends in a skyrocketing demand, while focusing on premium craftsmanship in the traditional way of production, makes each Guidi product a personal and unique experience. So that pretty much wraps up our quick dive into Guidi for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video and that you learned something. If you did, maybe consider subscribing down below and leaving a like as well. I would truly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one.